Microorganisms in Foods. The field of microbiology includes diverse organisms from different domains of life. Parasites, fungi, and yeast represent eukaryotic organisms with a nucleus within their cells. They may be unicellular or multicellular organisms. Bacteria are single-celled organisms that lack a nucleus. Viruses are actually not living organisms as they are obligate intracellular parasites. Collectively, these diverse organisms are termed germs, microbes, microorganisms, bugs, among many other names. Microorganisms are impo important in a number of fields, including medicine, agriculture, and of course, the food industry. This slide lists the types of microorganisms important to foods. They are categorized as either contributors of food spoilage, foodborne illness, or they're used beneficially for food enhancement. Bacteria are the most important group of microorganisms to consider because they contribute significantly to food safety, food spoilage, and to fermentations. Molds and yeasts are often associated with spoilage and are also exploited for fermentations. There are some types of molds that produce mycotoxins that can cause foodborne illnesses. However, the growth of these molds is limited to cereal crops and tree nuts. Viruses and parasites cause foodborne illness, but do not contribute to spoilage or fermentation because they do not have the ability to multiply in foods. This graph represents the different states in which bacteria, yeast, and molds can exist in foods. The horizontal axis is time and hours, and the vertical axis is the number of microorganisms. Due to the fact that microorganisms can grow, meaning increase in number, very rapidly, their count is represented on a logarithmic scale. Here we arbitrarily started our curve at three logs, or 1,000 microorganisms. The unit is colony forming unit, or CFU per gram. If you've ever seen a petri plate that is covered with little dots, those dots are bacterial colonies. Microbiologists will count these colonies and determine how many of these colony forming units, or CFUs, are present in a gram of food. Under ideal conditions, bacteria, yeast, and mold can multiply very rapidly. This is depicted by the blue line labeled growth. You can see that within eight hours, the number of microorganisms has increased from 1,000 CFU to 100 million CFU per gram. When conditions are not suitable for growth, microorganisms can simply survive in food, their numbers neither increasing or decreasing as depicted by the green line labeled survival. It is also possible that conditions are harsh or unfavorable, and in this case, we can have microorganisms actually dying or being inactivated in food, depicted by the red line here labeled death. Microorganisms are the most significant cause of food spoilage. Microbial spoilage can be caused by bacteria, yeast, and molds. The picture on the left is cheddar cheese, and you can see the blue-green mold growing on the surface, an extreme example of spoilage. The apples in the center picture are also clearly spoiled. Likely here, we have a combination of different bacteria, yeast, and molds growing on these apples. The can on the right has bulged ends, a telltale sign that microorganisms are growing in this can and producing gas as they do. If you ever have a bulge can like this, it is important to not consume the food and to safely dispose of the can. In canned food, there is a potential food safety risk and therefore um, you want to make sure that you dispose of any bulged cans, but we'll have more on that particular issue later. Generally, the growth of spoilage microorganisms does not cause a food safety issue. There are currently, there are certainly many bef beneficial microorganisms in the world. We continue to learn more about the positive health attributes of our own human microbiome. In the food industry, microorganisms are used to produce fermented food and to produce enzymes and chemicals used in food formulation. Also, without microorganisms, we would not have recycling of organic materials. Microbial decomposition is critical to life on Earth as we know it. There are certain types of microorganisms that pose a health risk and are the causative agents of foodborne illness. 
Multiple terms are used to describe a sickness that arises from consuming a contaminated food or beverage, and they're listed here for reference. There is no one syndrome that encompasses all foodborne illnesses. Typical symptoms often associated are nausea, vomiting, and diarrhea. However, there are many other symptoms that can be associated with a foodborne illness. Now we will talk a bit more in depth about each type of microorganism that can be found in food. Molds are ubiquitous in nature. I'm sure everyone has seen these growing on food in their own home. Molds are a major cause of food spoilage because molds have the ability to grow on many different substances and at room temperature as well as in your refrigerator. These are aerobic organisms, meaning they need oxygen to grow. A subset of molds can produce toxins as they grow in food and these toxins could cause foodborne illness. These types of toxin producing molds are typically associated with cereal crops and tree nuts. Yeasts are very similar to molds in terms of their distribution in nature, the temperatures at which they grow, and the fact that they are aerobic organisms. Yeasts like molds are also a major cause of spoilage. Yeasts are used beneficially uh, due to the fact that they produce alcohol and carbon dioxide as a byproduct during their growth. Yeast are used to ferment alcoholic beverages and as a leavening agent for bread. Bacteria are the most important group of organisms in food. Bacteria constitute a large domain of microorganisms that are unicellular and lack a nucleus. Typically a few micrometers in length, bacteria have a number of shapes ranging from spheres to rods and spirals. Depending on the type, bacteria can be aerobic, needing oxygen, or anaerobic, where oxygen is toxic. Some types of bacteria cause spoilage, others are used beneficially in fermentation. There are also bacteria that cause infections, while others produce toxins as they grow in food, and both the types of bacteria that cause infections and those that produce toxins in foods can make people sick. Some types of bacteria have the ability to form spores in unfavorable conditions. These spores are very hardy in the environment and can resist heat, acid, and low water activity environments. When a bacterial cell is actively metabolizing and able to increase in number, we call this the vegetative cell state. The bacterial spore, in contrast, has no active metabolic activity and does not divide. When conditions improve, the bacterial spore can sense this and is triggered to transform back into the vegetative cell state. The most important spore-forming bacteria related to the safety of canned food is Clostridium botulinum. Clostridium botulinum is a strict anaerobic bacteria, so when we drive oxygen out of a jar during canning, this makes an ideal condition for this particular bacteria to grow. This particular spore-forming bacteria produces a potent neurotoxin during growth that can cause death in humans and animals if ingested. The toxin is only produced when Clostridium botulinum is in the vegetative cell state. Toxin is not produced by the spore. We can keep Clostridium botulinum in the spore state by carefully controlling acid and water activity levels in canned food. We can also destroy the spores directly using high temperatures achieved by a pressure canner. Viruses and parasites are important to food because they cause foodborne illness. These microorganisms do not grow or increase in numbers in food. Some types of parasites, such as Trichinella spiralis, can be present in animal products, primarily wild game, but can be inactivated by freezing followed by proper cooking. Other types of parasites may, might end up, in, end up in food via human handling or other modes of cross-contamination. Toxoplasma gondii is a parasite endemic in domestic cats that is shed in their feces. It can be transmitted by food, so it is important to limit cat cross-contamination to food in the home. The source of foodborne viruses are humans. Norovirus and hepatitis A virus typically end up in food due to a food handler. It is important that no one who is sick prepare food for others and that proper hand washing is always followed to minimize the risk of virus cross-contamination to foods. 